Bharatanatyam's Natyam's history spans over a millennia, with the 11th century temple of Chidambaram in South India showing dance poses still performed in the style. Over the centuries, Bharat Natyam remained a temple dance, danced in the sanctum sanctorum of temples by solo woman dancers wedded to the deity as part of religious offerings. I always wanted a change from Bharatanatyam as it was and always would add a little thing to Bharatanatyam also to make it a little more interesting. I, I get fed up with just doing the same thing every day. Minalini was also the first woman ever to learn the all-male style of Kathakali going on to win its highest accolade, the Veera Shrinkala. So when I went home that day, I decided that I would do a full Kadakali piece without the costumes to show them the power of Kadakali and how beautiful a form it is. And it was astounding. The form of Kadakali she had not debuted from, but she had bared the form taking away all the costumes, colour, makeup and what have you and you could see the strength of the form and the entire galaxy of the dancers, musicians, painters, scholars, writers they are astounded what Brunalini had created. Now this is the power of her contemporary thinking. This is the power that having known Kathakali as a dance form she was able to bring out the essence of the dance form in a most magnificent manner. If the contemporary dance began in India from the tradition, this is where it began. From the last decades of the 19th century, Rabindranath Tagore was a towering cultural figure in India. And his school, Shanti Niketan, was a crucible for some of the country's most powerful creators and visionaries. <laughs> Spending three years with the Nobel Laureate, Mrinalini was greatly influenced by him. Tashir Desh, the kingdom of cards, was Tagore's protest against the stifling strictures of religion, especially Brahminical Hinduism. <laughs> It didn't have the force that I wanted it to have. I changed it a bit and made it very strongly against all isms, not only one but all isms, where mostly people thought it was against communism. In fact, when we did it in China, they did not appreciate it at all because they were full of what Tashi Desh was. And so it had a meaning for almost every kind of person or every kind of feeling that people had about isms. I was 
always looking for subjects that would shake people in dance. And when I heard of this incident in Ranmalpur, I was horrified. I had heard of it before of cruelty to Harijan, but I'd never really felt it as I did then. And it was then that I decided that I should dance it and show it to people. And it was then that Tagore had written a play also called Sandalika, which was on the same theme. And I took both of these ideas, Chandalika and my own ideas, and mingled them into a dance where it showed how Harijans were treated in our country, how people killed people, their own people. And that horrified me. And the only way I could talk about it was through dance. By the 1980s, the world was realizing the gravity of the destruction that development was causing to our environment. Disturbed by news that the Silent Valley rainforest in Kerala was going to be partially destroyed for a Heidel project, Murnalini created the first of her many environmental pieces. In the summer of 2004, Minalini undertook one of the biggest challenges that a choreographer can face, depicting the history of Indian science through dance. It's a huge amount of work. Choreographed by Mridalini Sarabhai, the concerns are contemporary as they were relevant 60 years ago or even today. She also experimented the music of Beethoven or other musicians from the West etc. But the core remained very, very Indian. And that is where her genius lies. Krishna ni begane baro Krishna ni begane baro Krishna ni begane baro 